was born into a family that valued education and community service. Mm -hmm. My dad was a teacher, a sixth grade teacher actually, and that's my sisters and I helping him put up campaign uh, signs for the school board election. Julie Randall was born in Seattle, Washington, and is the oldest of three girls. Her father set the standards pretty high from the very beginning. Then he continued principal, administrator, he was a commissioner of education for the state of Colorado, and then um, Bill Clinton tapped him to become his educational advisor. Randall's mother was a homemaker and very much part of the girl's school life. But she always had time to be on a committee for this and that, or be the room parent. So that was just what I was used to. To this day, her mother still makes time to give back. She volunteers <laughs> all the time. But now she's 82 and she works two days a week in the library. That's her little library tag. <laughs> Randall's father's career led the family to move to Arizona. And for the next couple of years, that was their new home. He was doing a sabbatical at Arizona State University. And after living in Seattle their whole lives, they fell in love with the sun. After graduating from Arizona State University herself, Randall decided to make a big move and set her sights to California. I loved it here. I wasn't quite as crazy about the Arizona heat as the rest of my family. So I just started working here. Then I eventually got married, had my two daughters. And when they were in school, I was a room mother. I was the AYSO person. Working her way up at Manpower Temp Agency, Randall was soon put in charge of opening an office right here in Taurus, but her passions took her elsewhere. It started when the girls were small and we all had different collections. Selling at the flea markets on the Sundays was something that I could do with the girls and I'd be home during the week with them. I didn't want to work away from the home. And she soon wouldn't have to. The next week I saw an ad in the paper that they were looking for a manager, so I thought, Perfect. And I right away filled out the application cover letter, got it in. They interviewed me the following week and I got the job. And with that, Randall became a manager at the Cal State Dominguez Hills Flea Market. I was thrilled because it takes all my event coordinating experience plus my knowledge of the flea market industry and it couldn't have been more perfect. And they just gave me the complete freedom to do what I needed to do to make the market grow. Even her daughters, Melissa and Emma Waybright, joined forces and worked at the flea market. I think I was 14 or 15, so I had to get a work permit in order to work, and I brought my friends along, and they got some work experience that way, too. Randall remembers how much her daughters enjoyed the experience and also sees the value of ambitious teens in the workforce. Of course, the people we have to help us are going to be first jobbers which were my daughter, her friends, my, my Miguel's kids and their friends. We've given so many people, and local people, their first jobs. Then I'm always their first reference when they're getting another job. But young people are not the only ones with opportunities here. A lot of the people selling at the fair are retired, and this is how they supplement their income. And while she saw a future for herself at the flea market on the college's campus, just a few years into the job, she received news they would be shutting it down. Unfortunately, they got a new president who decided he didn't want to have a flea market at his school and without even seeing it, so they closed us down. And as one door closed for Randall, another one opened. Before that, the business owners in downtown Torrance had come to the Dominguez Hills Antique Flea Market and they asked me if I would start a similar event here in Torrance. So I came and checked it out and the neighborhood was so quaint and, and nice and I really loved it. But it was a totally different type of event since it would be on the city streets rather than a parking lot. And Randall was up for the challenge. As it turned out, it worked out perfectly and we decided we needed some office space. We had to have a headquarters. And we found this really beautiful storefront that was available couple doors down. So uh, when I say we, um, my partner Miguel Salazar and I, we met at Cal State Dominguez Hills. He worked with me on the flea market there. Well, you know when we started, when actually when we, I was working in the university when actually I met Julie there and then uh, I was just taking care the maintenance and the whole uh, setup of the, of the show oh, okay. and after that you know we just got 
partners together to open this business in this side. With the antique show, we basically just managed the event. But when we first started, we would sell at the event because we had to make it look full. You know, we'd bring our stuff out there too because we didn't have that many vendors when we started. Through trial and error, Randall and her business partner, Miguel Salazar, tried everything to make this all work. Well, at first we let other people come in and we try and sell their stuff to them. But business was not growing as fast as they'd hoped. But it was a truly slow start. I mean, if it wasn't for our Miguel's credit cards, we probably would have gone out of business. They never gave up, and when a bigger space opened up down the street, they jumped at the chance. They just kept doing it, kept doing it, and learning a little bit more, and his furniture got better, and we could get, ask more prices for it. We learned about Craigslist. That was a real big thing, and it totally changed our business. Ever since we've been in this building, things have been going good. The Torrance Antique Street Fair was finally gaining some momentum and recognition winning the award for South Bay's Best Flea Market by the Daily Breeze readers in 2001. Very exciting. But back in the, that time, everyone, it all had to be handwritten and mailed in. You'd get, uh, it was published in the newspaper, write it in, mail it. Now you just go online. So it was really an honor to win. The people would go to that much trouble. We never actually dreamed that something like that would happen. You yeah. know, because it was hard having just a few dealers now to, you know, that we're running out of room in one way. <laughs> you know. Changing locations in 2006 was a huge turning point. I think it's pretty cool that we have an antique store in an antique building. Mm. Oh! This building's been around since 1920. This hardwood floor is original. Oh, wow. And when it opened back in 1928, it was Huddleston's furniture store. And of course, that was a new furniture store. And now the things you see in their ads are like what we have here is antiques. Located in the historical part of Torrance, Satori Avenue is often a destination, bringing not only locals to shop and dine, but also travelers visiting or staying in Torrance. And to have a store and her monthly show there in Old Torrance has been a perfect fit ever since. My passion is for my show. I just can't imagine having a show without having the antique store here. But the show is, it's like a party I produce every month. It's, we've, they've been coming here for 17 years, they're our friends. It's been wonderful to see my mom grow and to see her business grow and to see how much success she's had and how much she's done for others. I've been really proud of her. Life also took another unexpected turn as Randall faced health problems, limiting her mobility. Just that I walked funny, I walked stiffly, and I wasn't in pain, it was just a stiff walk. And that was for years. We told you about my little dog, Scout. He dashed out of the store and I couldn't run. For years, Randall could not get an answer on what was going on with her body. I went to a clinic, but, and they x-rayed my legs and said my legs were fine. But it wasn't until I was able to get, afford to get insurance that I could actually get it truly checked out. In 2008, Randall was diagnosed with spinal stenosis, a condition that puts pressure on the spinal cord and nerves. And I had surgery. They couldn't guarantee that it would cure me, and it didn't. But I just have kind of a gimpy walk, and sometimes I trip and fall. And I can't do much about it, but I try not to let it bother me. She says she can't quite move like she used to, but her family is right there by her side, including Salazar's three children. His son, Manuel, has really stepped up to the plate. I come here at 3 o'clock in the morning, help set up the, the spaces for the vendors and stuff, and we also help set up trash boxes, move the tables around, and show people where they need to go. He's like third, third in command, I'd say. Everybody meets here at 5 in the morning. He shows the dealers to their spaces, does all the cleanup. Cleanup's a big issue. You know, we have a big cleaning crew to go through. You know, Manuel's there every step of the way, and when we need a goblin for Halloween or a bunny for Easter, that's his job as well. <laughs> <laughs> what started with a few vendors and one block on Satori has taken over Old Town Torrance. Randall even got to sell furniture to her favorite actor. So I said, guys, I'm going on this delivery. <laughs> I was a big fan. I just finished watching Six Feet Under, and I, I recognized his voice. So I was, but I didn't want to say, is this the Michael C. Hall? Right. 
but when he opened the door, I said, oh, it is my favorite serial killer. <laughs> and he was very gracious and took the picture with us, loved the table. And for 17 years, every October, the Torrance Antique Street Fair's anniversary is celebrated, and the awards keep coming. In 2014, the city of Torrance selected our business as the Advantage Award winner for improving the quality of life in downtown Torrance because of the street fair. I've always felt proud of the work we were doing here. And what it's taught me is it takes time. Most businesses are not overnight successes. I'm just really happy at nine o'clock when we've gotten everybody in their place safely and without incident. One of the major perks to this fair is that all pets are welcome and they take full advantage of that. The pet parade and costume contest, my sister and I started coordinating at the anniversary street fair show in October. Working alongside a sheer pleasure pet salon and animal rescue groups, the pet parade has become a huge hit with over 50 dogs dressed in their best costumes. And we started it about five years ago in memory of our dog Scout that used to sit on the counter here and uh, greet customers and it's been a really nice event. The fourth Sunday of every month, 200 vendors set up shop offering unique finds like vintage jewelry, art, furniture, and even plants. And on average, nearly a thousand people come and visit each month. Some coming back month after month since the very beginning. It feels really good. And it feels really good when they buy this space for the following month because I know that meant they did well and they're coming back. I have met a lot of really good friends here and I also I met my uh, fiance here and so we've been selling together for like six years and stuff so I've met a lot of really great people. I've seen it grow you know before it was very quiet not too many people came down here but now everybody knows about Torrance yeah. you know it's like this market has put downtown Torrance on the map. I've been doing this since I was a kid. I started when I was six years old, so buying and selling has been in my blood all my life. Randall continues to live up to her father's legacy by providing opportunities and service in her own community. I can't imagine ever not doing this. So I'm probably gonna be riding around one of those scooters, you know, micromanaging everybody for a long time. For 17 years, Julie Randall has run the Torrance Antique Street Fair with the help of her partner, Miguel. It has provided countless volunteer and job opportunities for young people in the community. And with over 200 vendors and thousands of shoppers, we can see that it's a huge success. For Faces of Torrance, I'm your host, Jesse Pierre, speaking to ordinary people doing extraordinary things.